I am back from a whole week of streaming on Steam. I was drawing a bunch of fan art as part of Steam Next Fest and now I'm super excited to get into the next development sprint. Pretty much in February we need to finish up all of the tutorials. So here is our next development sprint. So let's stop chatting and let's get into coding. I have been doing quite some good progress. There's two tutorials smooth curves lesson and then the evaluation lessons let's see how they look in practice here we are all of the pixel art tutorials are now getting together lines diagonals and curves the new one so how do smooth curves work in pixel art well let's take a look the smoothest the curves are when the length of the individual segments will steadily increase as the curve progresses uh, and then here's a counter example. If we have this one, two, one, three, two, two, four, you know, it's just gonna be, uh, it just appears a little bit funky. And so how can we fix it? Well, we move these pixels up and down so we can just delete them like this. And then they rearrange into one, one, two, two, three, three, three. Uh, it also explains that it's okay if the lens repeat, like here we have two, two, three, three, or if there's a bigger jump, for example, from four, six. Obviously, if you have a longer curve, you will need to eventually, you know, like here it goes down three, two, one, and then it increases. But this is because the curve made a, a sort of a, a, an inflection. Let's not go out of the lines. And then finally here it gives us a, an example of how uh, to clean up the curve because yeah usually when we just do them freehand that's when this becomes a problem so here it just simply shows you this is how we do the cleanup after we are done with this very theoretical lesson well here we put stuff into practice so here similarly how we did in pixel art lines when we had to clean up the doubles here we also have to just draw a curve and then open up the pixel art evaluation paper which we have down here like we've already gotten used to by now so this will give us quite a big uh, amount of things that we can analyze an ideal line will not have abrupt length changes we want to have as minimal as straight parts as possible and also we want to have very minimal uh, inflection points so let's see how we're doing right now well we have one minor change here going from two to five and then we also have a major change here from two to six and two to ten uh, yep definitely you know uh, it also makes things very sort of angular and plus because there are these huge sections of just straight pixels here we see that here we have these more straight parts what i first like to do here even though the mission doesn't require it i like to just kind of uh, clean up the doubles well, let's just do this to start with you see we hit the 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 grade almost goes down because we've created all of these straight lines and yeah that's definitely not good if we want to have curves happening but you see now we just have we have these major uh, changes so let's try to just fix those this one goes for 1 to 14 1 to 4 so these ones are quite simple right because well instead of going 1 1 4 we just go 1 2 3 now we just have two down here same principle we can go 3 2 1 and then again here so now we don't have abrupt changes anymore uh, but we still have these straight parts so let's try and get let's try and smoothen them out so for example this one could go down to two and even this one could go down to two and here what if we just this one goes to two and that one goes to okay we have to come all the way here but this can easily be introducing this kind of a bigger section by this point we also just have one inflection point here where the, the curve actually changes the direction. Uh, but we do need to get all of these criteria above 90. So we still have this abrupt change here, one, four. So this one, like we learned before, very easy to do one, two, three. And then similarly here, we can just create another segment here. In fact, yeah, at this point it already says, hey, you're, uh, it's good enough. So let's see. We're at 98%, the only one that's, yeah, so, okay, so, okay, this one we can fix because it sort of detects that there's this line, there is a little bit of a, you know, a big, big change there, so. Yeah, the line is a little bit straight here, now we could try and fix it if we went 3, 2, 1, 1, and now we're actually at 100%, right, there's not much more you can fix in this line, um, so not 
in practice not everything you're gonna be able to get it to 100% you won't even want to sometimes you do want straight parts as part of your curves uh, sometimes you do want inflection points let's say you have a wavy thing if you see that there are some things that are uh, highlighted here you know just make sure that it's a conscious decision behind uh, that choice and now as we are done with these two we can go to the challenge to show that okay we understand these principles so we choose one of the references that we think would be the most useful to demonstrate this we've done all of this during my steam uh, next fest so we can take a look let's pick this one has a bunch of nice little curves let's say that we want to do this curve here yeah those sections could also be optimized there's no need to have so many uh, little wobbly inflections oh yeah and also it's also useful to actually look at the reference so what we you know here we see this line art we can trace but in reality uh, you know this is just for for general placement and then what we really should be doing is looking at the reference how things are done over there so this in theory works as long as you have your smooth curves and diagonals and pixel perfect lines this will then say that hey you uh, are now you you now know how the theory works and you are ready to move on so after I write the instructions for this line art challenge then I can also go to other less important tutorials especially I want to do this intended and perceived lines this is some nice I think theory that's gonna kind of make a sense of everything about what the artist sees and what's on the paper and then what does the viewer see and then also other curve stuff like circles and long curves so let's get to work and Hopefully we get as many of these things done as possible and I'll see you there in another week. I am very happy right now. The sprint has gone even up to all the expectations. I've done everything. Lots of new stuff coming in, tutorials left and right. So let's check it out. First of all, when we go to pixel art lines, there's a new tutorial. I really like this one that explains the difference between intended and perceived lines. This is something that I think is very important to cover because in this part of the game, this is very theoretical in, in, in ways, you will need to understand how different things are explained with different line types. So this tutorial introduces you into that terminology. And look at this. Now, uh, as you draw the curve, look, it just automatically adjusts to what the viewer sees. And then as soon as you're done, maybe this one I could delete. Um, here it shows this whole full picture, right? This is what the artist tries to communicate. This is what the artist sees in their head. This is what actually ends up on the canvas, but then again, it gets interpreted by the viewer into lines again. So this pixel art is some sort of translation medium. Oftentimes some information gets lost and then other times information gets created uh, that wasn't even there. So it's a beautiful medium up to interpretation of the viewer and uh, we all love it that's why we're here next lesson is quite a big one a little bit longer one now the smallest curves we can do in pixel art are simply pixels and the next one is a square now it's a little bit unfortunate the square is a circle but don't worry if let's say that there was a car here uh, and you would see that okay these are the wheels of a car obviously this would be a car like this um, you know you would be able to think oh okay those are wheels because this looks like a car so sometimes a square can also be a circle this keeps going for a lot of different variations because yeah circles are round things and pixel art which is all about squares obviously have quite some uh, problems with each other so a lot of times there's going to be different ways how to draw the same like for example here six by six uh, circle there's different ways which one do you like better in the end you're going to be drawing a lot of circles but it's very useful to be able to draw them hand by hand pixel by pixel and finally if you have circles with very big radius there is this one consideration that happens like so far we've been talking about how things should always keep decreasing like five four three two one but when the curve is very big there's a part of the circle that is going to be basically a 
diagonal that is an uneven diagonal so you kind of can't go out of getting this 2 one 2 one pattern so that happens and you just have to either live with this imperfection that yeah it's not monotonically decreasing and then increasing or you just say uh, well you know what I'm I don't like this I'm just gonna use even diagonals and some artists do and they create this a little bit more angular a little bit more blocky art style that uh, has this a little bit more flat uh, diagonals here at the tops which then this visualization also tries to show you how over here you see here one trade-off is having these parts that go a little bit wobbly and on the other hand here the trade-off is this middle part feeling a little bit flat different artists are going to choose different things as usual wow look at all these tasks you can do in this version i made myself go off the screen <laughs> so those are curves Yet another tutorial I managed, I was working really hard over the weekend to squeeze this in, is also line width. There's a thing, right? One pixel lines, there's only the horizontal and the vertical lines can actually be one pixel wide. Whenever we have diagonals, look at this line. Along the length of the line, it's not actually one pixel wide. It goes from 0 to 1.4, back to 0, 1.4. Square root of 2 for you math people. Um, so yeah, the thin line is some sort of a compromise, right? It's the thinnest you can get in pixel art, but if you actually want the line to be at least one pixel wide, well then you have to introduce doubles and you have what I call thick lines. We can also have double pixel lines. Unfortunately, I don't have a two pixel brush yet, so this step is a little bit cumbersome. Uh, but just imagine, imagine that there is a two pixel brush sometimes in the future and you can just draw this very nice and quick. And the next part I'm very happy about because each one of these three line art styles plus one extra are now explained by actually looking at examples of video games that use them. We're gonna start with Sheep Lad. This kind of line art uses the minimum amount of lines. It gives you as much space as it can for you know putting details on the interiors i also kind of like how you know when you have these kind of lines they help the line flow smoothly like your eyes flow smoothly whereas with these ones it kind of makes me stop more as i go alongside them after you're done with all of this uh, drawing yeah here it explains another uh, potential downside wherever you have this zero pixel separation like right here or right here right these two areas are not super clearly separated your eye can just kind of go through this gap little here your eyes can sort of escape through these gaps so these different areas are not 100 percent separated one from another because of this zero pixel uh, height i call i say that it, the spaces bleed into each other how can you help that well when things have different colors sort of the problem goes away cheating our way to success we are done with this one so let's take a look at an example of thick lines here we have an artwork uh, done by cast pixel the bonuses here are there is clear separation for example here each one of these areas are going to be clearly separated between each other there's no there's no bleeding from one part to another on the other hand, as a disadvantage, it takes more space because all of these uh, extra pixels need to be done. And uh, it also appears a little bit more blocky. Like, like I said, the eye for me follows a little bit harder. This is how it looks like when all the pixel, all the line art is in. And then when you finish coloring it, look at this beautiful sprite. Looks very bold, a bold look for a bold character. Finally, we have two pixel wide lines as seen in Die in the Dungeon. Wow, what a wonderful frog do we get out of this one. The line art separates areas very, very clearly. To me, it still flows uh, much easier over the lines because they're so wide, the doubles aren't that noticeable anymore. And then finally, you don't even have to stay consistent. Like, you can vary between line width so for example here in arc lens this sprite uses tapered lines like 
cheat a little bit. See here how it uses lines to separate the depth uh, between different things. But here it sort of just tapers down from two to one to zero. And especially when you complete the color pass as well, you know, using anti-aliasing, it extends this line even more. So this kind of tapered lines can look really nice. And you could even be mixing, have some of the lines be thin on the inside, have some of the lines be thick on the outlines. All of this is possible. There we go. We have completed that. And to end up, each one of these tutorials also added one more things that you can do in a challenge. We've talked about this challenge already before, but yeah, now as you complete these tutorials, you can also complete this stuff. Again, this is very experimental and I'm also not going to get a very good score, but you see the detection works quite nicely. So it detected the thick lines here. This ones it detected that they're varied because it goes from the double ones to thin ones. Um, yeah, and then there's a bunch of messes like this when the algorithm doesn't know what the heck is happening because it's just a stupid computer trying to decide what's going on. There's no machine learning or any of those kind of AI stuff happening. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with this. Maybe I'll throw it out if it's not really helpful educationally. Maybe I'll just throw the percentages out. I kind of like looking at these things and it does help you when I'm drawing this kind of stuff. It does help me double check. Oh, did I forget about this uh, smooth curve here? And there we have it. We have done a lot of things. Look at all this list here of things that you can do in the current version. And yes, that will also be then the tutorials are pretty much done for the game what that will be released into early access. So the tutorials are all down and next we go. We have the challenges that are just gonna have to be uh, tweaked a little bit but now for the final thing there should be a new project coming up so that's what i'm going to be focusing in the next sprint we're going to start working towards a new project i'm gonna not spoil it just yet what it is uh so yeah uh subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to keep on getting these updates thank you very much and i will see you next time in the next dev vlog bye bye